My name's Philip Durbin. I'm, we farm in the Chew Valley area. Uh, we're dairy farmers. Uh, we got a herd of uh, 300 Guernsey, pedigree Guernseys. Um, our main income, our main enterprise is milk production. Um, but we also have some beef um, and sell surplus um, young stock. Uh, we're currently testing today. Um, that's one of many tests we've had to go through in the last um, 19 months. Um, we've had, this would be the seventh test. Um, over that time we've lost up till now 71 animals. Uh, mainly in the milking herd, uh, which has been a, a very sad loss. The actual TB testing, the first day um, the cattle are brought in, they're given two injections in the neck by the vet, and um, three days later the skin readings would be taken um, from the injection site. Obviously we got more staff in to help um, get the cattle in. Um, generally the first day is fairly easy, but on the day that they do the reading, which is three days later, the cattle obviously know what's going on and they don't want to come back in from the fields. And uh, rather than come to call, they, they have to be almost driven back in. We feel like every test, we, we feel as though we're on a knife edge. Like we don't know whether how many cows we're going to lose. So it's fingers crossed today. I'm the third, third generation uh, farmer on, on this farm. Um, over the last 40 years we've bought, built up a, a herd of uh, cows uh, which there must be at least around 70 cow families. Um, each cow has a, has a name, they're all pedigree. It's a very sad day when um, the cattle have shown up positive. Uh, not only on the day that uh, the test shows it as a reactor but um, the day that actually have to be loaded up onto lorry is uh, a very sad day. Uh, it can get very emotional. <coughs> uh, from a business sense, TB has uh, really affected us. We've been closed down. Um, you, you sort of feel, as a farm, alienated because you, we can't go to take any animals to shows. We can't. Um, go to local markets, support local markets. We can only take our cattle to, to slaughter. The testing day itself stress the cattle and ourselves. Um, so we've got a reduced milk production on that day. Um, and since we lost so many animals over this 18 month period, again, we've, we've had quite a dent in our milk production. Um, so that, that, that has quite a big dent on our bottom line. And Going forward, we won't have quite so many replacements because we haven't had the cows there to, to breed from. What may have caused the outbreak back in 2000, January 2010. Um, well, as we're closed herd, we don't buy in any animals and we haven't done for the last three years. My finger tends to point at mainly the, the um, badgers. Just after our tests back in the spring of 10, um, when we come out first thing in the morning, I, have, I did catch at least two badgers in our feed troughs, um, which then really points the finger at them being the source of the problem. Um, so whether they were actually urinating or defecating on the feed and the cattle were actually eating it, so they could have been infected with TB, and that's the way it's been picked up. But since then, we've, we've improved our troughs, feed troughs and cattle housing. If we go clear today and we feel that the, the, the source of infection of the badgers that might be still out there, it's, well, it's a big cloud over our heads, really. If the government go, decide to go ahead with the, the badger control, um, it's some light at the end of the tunnel. Something's actually been done. The, the, the problem's actually been managed. Um, as it is, it's not managed. It's, as with anything, if left unmanaged, it, it can spoil out of control like it has 